Hello and good morning guys and welcome to a short tutorial video or I guess an explanation video. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the dev, dev UI or the developer mode in City Skylines 2. First of all, I want to have a, a huge disclaimer. This, everything you're gonna uh, learn from me in this, uh, this video, use it with a very, um, use it very carefully, like it might, it probably will break your save games and stuff like that. Save before, don't save after you use any of the tricks here. Uh, I just want to show it because there are a few really useful features of it, at least, that I've found so far. So first of all, to enable developer mode, you have to go into uh, the Steam <laughs> and um, select properties right click on city skylines 2 and select properties and add dev add a hyphen developer mode with a capitalized m i believe you have to have in the launch launch settings or whatever it is in not swedish in english um but it's this text box right here so with this enabled you get a few options you get for example the option to open up um this here menu oh i had the ui turned off here <laughs> uh, by pressing the tab key and uh, you can see there's a lot of stuff here but the first thing i want to show you is probably the most useful uh, feature of this it's uh, going into the simulation and um, simulation tab and weather and climate and uh, you can see we can actually turn off the rain by overriding precipitation. So if we run the simulation a bit, it will stop raining. So finally we can get uh, good looking screenshots of a city where it was raining a lot. We can also use it to um, change the time of year. Um, it's going to take a bit of time for the trees, trees to change color, but you can see now it's summer change the LUT and uh, stuff is changing. We can also change the cloudiness if we wanted to. We can override it, we can have more clouds, we can have less clouds, medium clouds. We can change the aurora intensity, that's only gonna be visible at night probably, but um, anyway. And uh, I can also try to show how to force snow to, <laughs> how, how to force it to snow here, we can we can lower the temperature, overriding the temperature, setting it to minus 36 and increasing the precipitation to or the precipitation. And uh, then you have it, like you have low temperature and, and rain becomes snow basically. And it's pretty cool. We can have it snowing in the summer. So, and this will actually cover the ground. It's already going to be covering, I think the, the taller peaks no not really it's just slowly 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 covering everything so I'm gonna turn it off again actually I'm not gonna turn it off I'm gonna turn off this and I'm gonna increase the temperature so we're gonna have a incredibly warm weather right now and we're, we can see the, the snow turn to rain and we can turn off the snow again the rain sorry so it's very useful for changing the climate especially if you want to get rid of the rain that's the I think that's one of the safer ways of using it. Uh, but still, as I said, be very, very careful. Everything you do here might just break your game. So especially like moving the seasons around, I don't know, that could like just break your game. So please uh, use it carefully, only like to get screenshots and stuff like that. That's that's the best, uh, best way. Don't save anything after you've done this. <laughs> um, another thing, we can do with this, which is potentially more game breaking, is we can do this thing here. We can bypass validation results. This lets us do a lot of weird stuff. Um, how do I? How do I even show this? We can show this by like um, illustrating here. Here we have like we're gonna place an elementary school on this road. A placement, just normal, it works. It snaps to the road, it, it places it. Um, if I tab out of this menu and I disable the road snapping, you can see here it won't let me say it says overlapping items, right? 
it says overlap and I items it's both a road and a school what happens if I just press yeah I clicked and I just play placed it anyway so the bypass validation results basically lets you do anything uh, that shouldn't be allowed because of overlapping and uh, and other reasons a very useful uh, use for this is specifically for the waterfronts. Uh, I'm gonna show how to make like a key very quickly with this. You see, okay, here it actually lets me do, okay, here, you see, in water, no problem. In water, no problem. In water, still no problem. It's not gonna be, it's not ever gonna be a problem with water anymore, with this tool. But as I said, once again, this is extremely game breaking. Be very careful using it. Um, yeah, and for the final thing I want to show is also extremely game breaking, probably the most game breaking, and it's probably going to cause my game to crash. But I'm pressing the home key on my keyboard, and I get this add object list. This add object list lets me place essentially uh, anything. Um, I can place things that are, for example. Uh, just buildings. I can place sub buildings to buildings, like uh, the high school sports field, for example, like just as a separate thing. I can place uh, I can place industrial chimney props with with smoke coming out of them. I can place. Uh, I can place AC machines. I can rotate them, it seems, also. I can use a brush to place a lot of them. Yeah, so this is extremely powerful, but... And once again, like, this this also might extremely break your game, so be very, very careful using this. Okay, we have bike racks. Can you just do a brush of bike racks everywhere. Um, we also have a few uh, like not props stuff here. We have surface areas. Look at this. Sand surface. Ore surface. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh wonder what the placeholders are. Uh, we have tiles, three different types of tiles. We have... Yeah, we can move these nodes we created. We can move the nodes of built-in uh, buildings as well. So it really becomes very powerful. You can see we can move this grass can probably move whatever that is also. I don't know what it is, but some kind of surface. We can use, uh, there's two different grass surfaces. There's a plain grass, and I think this is a sort of manicured or a more cut grass. Uh, it's like extremely powerful, uh, too powerful probably for most, uh, for me included. And and as I said several times, and I will say it again, this might just break your save games. I do not know if this if this is something we should rely on, reliably try to use. But I know that it it it's going to be uh, useful for uh, for like some things at least. And some people might want to play around with this and see what we can do and and what's possible. But but huge disclaimer alert: like everything everything here might just break your game. I think we also have lines, if I recall. We can place like, uh, we can place car lanes, okay. Uh, I think it's maybe markings. Okay, <laughs> okay, we can place uh, decals basically, we got decals. I don't know, we can, it snaps to the road, that's interesting. It doesn't let me place it overlapping, okay. Uh, we can place, 
Yeah. Yeah, there's there's just so much ambulance. We can place cars. This is probably gonna be what crashes crashes my game. To be honest. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm I'm done. I'm done. This was a very short video. Um, be very careful. Do not try this at home. And if you try this at home, don't blame me if your game just crashes and doesn't work. Uh, be very careful saving after you're doing edits with any of these uh, any of these things. But um, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys next time.